Last week I talked about God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And uh, so I talked about the, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. And, of course, the sound mind that we get, a mind that's disciplined, that has self-control because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We can cast down thoughts and imaginations and fears because of this sound mind that the Holy Spirit gives us. Well, I want to talk once again about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 talks about the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for the profit of all. That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. It talks about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And I'd like to talk about how God manifests His Spirit today, 2020, here in Highland, Michigan, in your heart and your life. And... Uh, I remember when I first got saved, and I was 18 years of age, and first got saved and only been saved uh, just a short time, about six weeks, seven weeks, and I was attending the church, and it was a spirit-filled or charismatic church that believed in the gifts of the Spirit, which at that time, as at my age and my lack of uh, understanding scriptures, I had no idea that other churches didn't believe in this. I had no idea of the controversy or anything. I didn't even know how the gifts of the Spirit even operated in the church, but I'm at the Sunday night service, and the Spirit of God was moving, and the people were worshiping, and it was all exciting. It was just uh, uh, shouting unto God and clapping our hands and praying praising the Lord. It was just great. Then we finished with the song, and all of a sudden, uh, everybody got real quiet. Now, i am only been saved uh, a short time. I'm a teenager. I'm really not in tune to the Holy Spirit and what's happening, but Holy Spirit's directing everybody. Everybody's calming down, quieting down at the same time. And it just got real still, real quiet. And I'm thinking to myself, well, this is interesting. What are we waiting on? And uh, a number, number of seconds rolled away. Then all of a sudden, this woman started talking. Sounded like Chinese or Japanese. Sounded like an Oriental language to me. She started talking, and she talked, 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 and uh, didn't understand a word she was saying. And, but I'm thinking, well, this is kind of interesting. And then she stopped, and everything stayed real quiet and some seconds ticked off, and then all of a sudden somebody starts speaking in English, kind of like pronouncing, the Lord would say, the Lord is with you, the Lord would, and like this is a message from God. And, and then that got done, and the service continued, the pastor preached, the service was over, and uh, I wasn't sure what happened. I didn't even know enough to ask questions about what happened, but uh, the, the friend that took me to church, she explained it to me. She said, do you understand what happened? I said, no. And she said, that woman that spoke was speaking in tongues. It was a gift of tongues. And then after she spoke, a person gave the interpretation of tongues. I said, wow, that's something. It tells us in 1 Corinthians 14, 21, in the law it is written with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people. And Apostle Paul is using that passage out of, I think it's the book of Isaiah, and uh, it seems like it's pulled out of context, but he relates it to tongues with men of other lips. Well, I speak to this people. God was speaking to us in that church service through the gift of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. And the Bible here tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, that in the exercising of the spiritual gifts, that is the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Well, what do I mean when I say the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? To manifest literally means when something spiritual becomes real. It is the revealing of God among the people. In the Living Bible translation, 1 Corinthians 12, 7, it says, the Holy Spirit displays, displays or manifests, makes known, makes revealed, displays God's power through each of us as a means of helping the entire church. So how does God reveal himself through us? As we exercise spiritual gifts, the manifestation of the Spirit, the power of God is displayed. We say, man, God is here. God is among us. Now, let me say this. There is a difference between God's presence and God's manifest presence, the manifestation of the Spirit, God's presence. We understand that God is omnipresent. He is everywhere present at the same time. So he is here, he's over in Europe, 
He's down in Africa. God's spirit is everywhere present all at the same time. That's the omnipresence of the Lord. Psalm 139 talks about this. If I ascend into heaven, David says, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. So God is everywhere present at the same time. I did not know the Lord until I was 18 years of age. I never really sensed God or experienced God. But as I look back before I got saved, God was with me. He was present, right? He was with me. He saved my life. Many times I believed the way I was living and the things that I would do, crazy things I would do, and I realized God was there ordering things, keeping me alive physically to the day that it would please the Lord to reveal his son in me, and I would get saved April 15, 1976. So God was present, but I was not aware of the manifest presence of God until I got saved, the revealed presence of God, the power of God on display. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was down in Haiti, it was after my first year of Bible college, me and two uh, other Bible college students took a summer internship or missionary trip down to the nation of Haiti. This would be back in 1977, I believe it was. We went down there, the three of us, and we spent about two and a half months down in Haiti, and we're ministering, working with a missionary. Don Jones was his name. And uh, after we were there about three days, he came by the house where we were all staying and uh, grabbed the three of us and took us to a voodoo service, a Haitian voodoo service. And voodoo is very strong influence in the uh, nation of Haiti. It would be, I would say, uh, along with Catholicism, their national religion. And so he took us to this voodoo service. It was for tourists. And sure enough, in this voodoo service, people would get possessed of evil, evil spirits. You would see it happen. And they would do uh, miraculous feats uh, such as eating fire, walking on glass, walking across uh, a fire pit, things of this nature, eating glass. And they do it right in front of you, and you would sense the presence of evil. Now, God is everywhere present at the same time. So God was there, but I, would, I want you to understand, I did not feel or sense the manifest presence of God. I sensed evil, the manifest presence of evil, but not the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. So there is a difference, I think we can all agree with this, between God's presence and God's revealed presence, his power on display, his manifest presence. I'd like to talk about how God manifests his presence in our day and age. And I think he does it four ways. One is through the preaching of the word. Second is through praise and worship. Third is through the gifts of the spirit. Fourth is through acts of love. And thanks be to God, we have all these things at Cornerstone Church. And I think it's great that this message to reveal God, to display God, and that last point on acts of love. Boy, in our country right now, don't we need to display God through acts of love? With all of our strife and all of our division and all of our fear and, and the presence of racism and uh, the, the, the demonstrations, the rioting, the looting, the anger. Where is God? Well, I tell you where God is. He's in me. He's in you if you're a believer. And let your light so shine that they may see your good works, that's acts of love, and glorify your heavenly Father which is in heaven. That's in the book of Matthew chapter 5. But let's talk about this. God manifests his presence, bluntly put, simply put, through you and I, through us. Let's talk about the preaching of the word of God. That's what I'm doing right now. And God manifests his presence through preaching. In other words, you sense God, you feel God, you hear God through the preaching and teaching of the word of the Lord. There's a story in the book of Acts chapter 10 when Peter went to, a Gentiles, to the Gentiles to preach the gospel. God had orchestrated all this, set it all up. And Peter's preaching, it says this in Acts chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed, those were Jewish Christians, circumcision who believed, were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. The next verse says, for they heard them speak with other tongues. 
That's the manifest presence of God, the gifts of the Spirit. Peter's preaching, and as he's preaching, God then begins to move. Those Gentiles, they weren't Christians, but God had created in them a hunger and thirst and a seeking heart. And they're calling for Peter. And as Peter's preaching, obviously faith arose in their heart. and They were believing unto salvation. And in the midst of all that that was happening, that supernatural dynamic, God then pours out his spirit upon them. And they not only get saved, but they get filled with the spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Now that is the manifest presence of God through preaching. On the day of Pentecost, Peter is preaching. And he says this in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, cut to the heart, and said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? So Peter's preaching on the day of Pentecost. The crowd is gathered because of the commotion of people being filled with the Spirit and speaking with other tongues. God gathers a crowd in the midst of this confusion, controversy, unique experience. They don't know what's happening. Happening, God loves to gather crowds in controversies and then glorify his name. And may God do that in America. And all this controversy, may God use this to advance the gospel. Amen? Amen. So he's, he then begins to preach to these Jews that had gathered there. And the Bible says they were cut to the heart. That's the conviction of the Holy Spirit that came As a result of the preaching of the word, they were cut to the heart, convicted of the Holy Spirit, and they responded, what do we need to do to be saved? And thousands got saved that day. Just a little while later, Stephen is preaching. He's preaching to religious leaders. And the scripture says this in the book of Acts chapter 7, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed at him with their teeth. Imagine that. That when Peter preached, they were cut to the heart or convicted by the Lord and wanted to be saved. Stephen's preaching, they're cut to the heart or convicted by the Holy Spirit, and they want to kill him. And they did kill him. They stoned him with stones. God's power, God's conviction, God's word came upon them through the preaching of the word. This is God manifesting his power, his presence through the preaching of the word. In Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul talks about the gospel. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God. We like to think that prayer is the power of God, but in this passage of Scripture, it's the gospel that is power, that is the power of God. And that is why the Bible says, how beautiful are the feet of them that bring good news. And uh, Paul says, I'm a debtor to preach this gospel because when you preach the gospel, God moves and God reveals himself to people in the preaching of the word. So that's one way that God manifests his spirit, his presence, his power in this day and age is through the preaching of the word. Secondly is through praise and worship. I love to praise and worship the Lord. I do. I love to praise and worship the Lord. And I remember I was going through a very, very challenging time a number of years ago. And I was reading my devotions and I came to Psalm 20 verses 1 and 2. And I was just reading it. And it says this. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. And when I read that, God's going to send me help from the sanctuary and strengthen me out of Zion. Zion was the dwelling place of God, Jerusalem, the capital. And, of course, the church, the New Testament church, is the dwelling place of God. And the sanctuary of the Lord is The local church is the habitation of God through the Spirit, right? When I read that in Psalm 20, God spoke to me and said, I'm going to send you help and send you strength when you go to the house of the Lord and worship with God's people. And sure enough, during that very challenging, dark time, I'd be very low and discouraged and uh, dealing with all kinds of emotions. And I'd come to church, and I remember I'd just sit, be sitting on the front row there with my wife on Sunday morning and also on Wednesday night. And uh, I wouldn't feel like praising the Lord, but uh, we'd start singing, and I'd start entering in. And next thing I know, God was moving in my heart. He was helping me, strengthening me, encouraging me. I was sensitive. God's presence. God loves to manifest his presence 
through worship. We know the story. Paul and Silas in prison, they sang praises. God moved miraculously and, and opened up those prison doors and broke off their chains. Miracles happened when they sang and worshiped the Lord. King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, he put the worshipers out front and they began to sing praises to the Lord and God defeated their enemies. You can read about that in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. There's so many places in the scripture where it talks about how when we worship the Lord, we bind kings with fetters of iron. He teaches our fingers how to war, the scripture says. We understand through praise and worship, God manifests his spirit. Hmm. That's why when we gather together next Sunday in the 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock service, and I hope that you plan on coming and worshiping. And uh, listen, we're going to worship together, and there's power, multiplied power when we join hearts together as God's church. It's going to be so much fun and such a blessing and so much joy to be in the presence of the Lord and sensing God's move, and God is among us. Hallelujah. How about this one? The third way, first way was through preaching. Second way is through praise and worship. The third way that God reveals, manifests his presence is through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We read about those nine supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in verses 7 to 11. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one of us for the profit of all, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. What a great passage of Scripture. That's what makes us what I call us a charismatic church. Charismata literally means gifts of grace or gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe, we believe, that these gifts are for today and that God uses them and distributes them still today to edify and strengthen his church and also to manifest his presence or his spirit to reveal his power. These nine gifts that I just read are divided into three sections. One is the gifts of revelation. That's the word of wisdom, knowledge, and discerning of spirits. These gifts are given to us so that the church may think like God thinks. The next three gifts are the gifts of utterance. That'd be tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. These gifts are given to the church so that we might speak like God speaks. And the third gifts are the gifts of power, which is the gift of faith. Healing and the working miracles. Notice that the gift of faith is given before healing and the working miracles because you receive that gift of faith and then you're able to believe God for that healing or for that miracle. These gifts are given so the church may act like God acts. So gifts of revelation, gifts of utterance, gifts of power, the nine gifts of the Spirit. I remember years ago when I first got saved, talking about the gifts of utterance, tongues, the gift of tongues that needs an interpretation so that all might understand what is being said. Well, I would say, like I said, when I was a teenager, and I did not understand the doctrines and uh, the controversies that were out there. And I get saved in this church that's a charismatic church, and the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. Two days after I gave my heart to Christ, God baptized me in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And then a number of weeks went by, about five or six weeks later, I'm in high school, and some high school friends said, let's go to a Bible study together. And that Bible study was taught by a teacher of the high school I attended, Centerville High School. They said, man, the guy's a good teacher, let's go. And so I went with them. It was a Tuesday night Bible study, and there's probably eight to ten high school students there. And a, a friend of mine, his name was Wells, he's playing the guitar, and he's singing a song. It's a worship song. It's before the, the man would teach the lesson. And so he's singing the song, and we're just all in this man's basement sitting down on the different chairs. And 
and uh, he is bringing that song to a close, and I'm just sitting there. I've been saved about six weeks. I don't know anything. I'm just sitting there, and all of a sudden, I feel the presence of God come on me, and it feels real heavy. Real heavy, like the heavy hand of God was upon me. Felt real heavy. And my, my heart started pounding on the inside. Boom, 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 boom. So loud, I thought other people could hear it. I, I don't think they did, but it just seemed that loud. And uh, my, my, my jaw, my throat, my jaw, my tongue got like real thick, real thick. And remember, I started shaking a little bit. It was, as I look back, it was the anointing of God. And... All of a sudden, I became aware, I don't know why, but I needed to speak out in tongues. It actually was the gift of tongues. God was so anointing me and coming upon me to motivate me to speak out in tongues. First time I'd ever done it. And so I, he closes that song. It's all real quiet, and I speak out in tongues. <laughs> and then I, I stop, and it gets real quiet. And then Wells, who was playing the guitar, he then gives the interpretation of that tongue. And then he is done, and then the, 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 the teacher then teaches the Bible lesson. And it was a good Bible lesson, as I recall. I was blessed. And we got done, and we were walking out. It was during the summertime. We were walking out of his house. I remember I was in his front yard, and, and some of the high school students go running up to me. He says, what were you doing? What do you think you were doing? He doesn't believe in that. I said, believe in, believe in what? Believe in tongues. He doesn't believe in tongues. What were you doing? And I didn't know what else to say other than God anointed me and used me to bring that tongue and to give the interpretation, perhaps to send a message to that teacher that didn't believe in it, that this was real. It was the manifestation of the Spirit given so he would, he had to have known, I'm just brand new saved. I don't know anything. God's using me. And uh, I tell you what, I'm not exactly sure what happened with that teacher, what happened with that Bible study, but uh, I still remember that. Those, those students, what are you doing? What are you doing? He doesn't believe in that. But God used it, right, to reveal himself, to display his power. And uh, I tell you what, it's really something because he came on me with such an anointing that I had a physical manifestation to it, you know, shaking and the heart beating and this heavy pressure and this weight on me. And oh, I tell you what, it was really, really amazing experience. God reveals himself, displays his power, manifests himself through the gifts of the spirit. One final one, through acts of love. Jesus says this, by this we all know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Love for one another. Listen, this is what we can do. This is what we can do. When we're at church, we can love each other. Hallelujah. There's so much love at Cornerstone Church. God is among us as we just love one another. But also as you leave church and you go about your, your day, your job, Whatever it is you're doing, interacting with your neighbors, speaking about this or that, there is so much anger and strife in our nation. I get that. But the answer is not to join in with anger and strife. The answer is to display the love of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that if we would do this, they will glorify our heavenly Father which is in heaven. Let me read to you Matthew chapter 5. It's on the Sermon on the Mount. It says this, Matthew 5, 16, Jesus speaking to us. Let your light, that's Jesus Christ within you, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, that's your acts of love, and glorify your Father in heaven. So as you shine Jesus through acts of love to people, they will end up attributing that to God because they'll end up glorifying your Father which is in heaven. They'll say, man, God is in them. And that's how we can reveal God to people is through acts of love, acts of charity, acts of kindness. Be loving, be kind, be forgiving, be charitable, be gracious, speak well, give hope. Don't enter into the anger. Don't enter into the strife. Remember this. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Let me give you a couple of scriptures here. 
When we look at our nation, we need to pray for peace because the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. We also need to pray that we might have God's perspective on things. Listen to this. The wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle, able to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. That's James 3, 17. We need to display the wisdom from above. Give us that perspective, God. We need to pray for God's patience because of God's kindness and forbearance towards each and every one of us, Romans 2, 4. And we need to also pray for an outpouring of his wisdom and direction for our leaders and officials who are dealing with this crisis. Let's be filled with love, the love of God, properly ministered to the hearts of people during this horrible, horrible time, and may God heal our land. Heal our land. Amen? Amen.